all day long right here on the MLG main stage. Over 200 Halo 3 teams have been battling it out. And there are only four teams that remain. And by the end of the night, there will only be one. This is the MLG playoffs live from Dallas, Texas. And I'm your host, Farouk Tahid. With the 2008 MLG regular season over and done with, we got our top teams who are gearing up and getting ready for our national championships next month in Las Vegas. But tonight, tonight, it is all or nothing for most of these teams, actually all of these teams. We're going to see who's going to be that one team that moves on and takes that last spot and saves the season, keeping their season alive. But right now, we're going to see who's going to bring you all the live action. Joining me up here in the booth is Chris Puckett and Sundance DG Giovanni. Sundance, welcome back. Thanks, Ruth. Puckett, we're here in Dallas. Sundance, Ooh. this is the playoffs. This is the playoffs. This is a whole new level of, of stress and tension for these teams. I mean, you have to understand, your entire season can come to an end here if you don't live up to it. There's four teams left. Guess what? Three go home sad. One fights their way through, proves that they can deal with the pressure, and gets a shot in the playoff in, in the Vegas championship where all that money and that fame is on the line. And now, Farouk, this event, like Sundance said, it's definitely all about the pressure. And some of the teams that we've seen here, they're just kind of struggling so far. One of those teams, of course, being UTI. They just lost their 3-0 lead over Gotta Love the Sun. They're playing behind us now, going up against Legends. And speaking of Legends, they lost their very first match of the tournament to Florida Jackalopes. But you know what? They heated up as the tournament went on, and they just dominated Florida Jackalopes 5-0 in their second wow. series to make their way to the main stage. Hey, I got to say something. Everybody should know this. Gandhi is on that squad, of course, and he has a history. Put him into a corner, and he seems to come out. I don't know what it is. He makes his life much more difficult sometimes, but right now they're on fire. He's taking charge. He is on fire. Defy is doing a great job. The team is gelling finally. Maybe they needed that wake-up call early, but I'll tell you what. They definitely didn't make it easy on themselves. Yeah, and one of the teams that made a move is Legends. They picked up Legend Pimps, and hopefully that helps them out. We're going to see what happens. But there were a lot of uh, uh, changes that went on between Orlando and Toronto, and it led up to a huge, huge, exciting expectations for Toronto event, and it lived up to the hype, fellas. I mean, you got to see it at home. Pucker, you were there with me, and we saw that it was a great, great tournament. And you know what? For the people out there who forgot, have short-term memory, you don't quite remember or you just missed it. Let's check out a recap and see what happened in Toronto. MLG's first ever Canadian stop proved to be the most exciting event yet on the 2008 Pro Circuit. With some of the biggest team changes in MLG history taking place just before the event, Toronto was sure to have plenty of upsets and amazing Halo 3 action. Before the event, Final Boss made a huge roster change that affected the entire league. Dropping their captain Walshy for Straight Rippin's neighbor, they were hoping to get back in the championship match for the first time since the Meadowlands. This, this is the best Halo I'm playing in my life. I mean, I'm extremely focused. I have a lot to work for, um, a lot to prove. Straight Rippin in turn picked up a hot new player on the circuit, sniped down, while Walshy went to instinct with another set of twins, Lunchbox and Roy. With such a shakeup, it seemed like it could be anybody's game with all the best teams in Halo 3 looking to take home the crown. I feel like if we go even in slaves with any team on the circuit right now, we'll win the objective game. Final Boss and Straight Rippin met up in the winner's quarterfinals to put their new rosters to the test. After one of the most intense five-game series MLG has ever seen, Straight Rippin came out on top, proving that despite losing Neighbor, there was just too much talent at Straight's core. I think once the match started going, we realized how bad we needed to beat these guys. And going down 2-0 is a big deficit, but we knew we could win, and staying focused is the main goal for our team. And we ended up pulling out three straight games. To the surprise of many, Instinct seemed to be having a very easy time, not dropping a single game on their way to the winner's bracket finals to face Straight Rippin. Both teams were on fire, but Straight came out on top in a 3-1 victory. We kind of didn't take it as serious as we should have. I think we, uh, Overlooked a couple of our game types and they beat us on those. So I think uh, I'm not too disappointed. I'm really happy I'm on the scene. Final Boss fought their way through the loser's bracket to meet up with Instinct in the loser's finals, where the match everyone wanted to see played out. Walshy faced off against his former teammates and pulled off an amazing 3 1 victory, earning a second chance at Straight Rippin in the championship match. 
It was uh, like taking candy from a baby. But oh. wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa! Let me finish. Let me finish. But I think the baby would put up a better fight. Ah! <laughs> so the stage was set for the straight rip and rematch, and after eight hard-fought games, Straight proved that this was their tournament, winning six to two and taking home the title of MLG Toronto Halo Three champion. Straight rip and played it incredible this entire tournament. We're feeling great. Everybody played really well, and it was an overall. Uh, great team effort. I'm really proud of how everybody played. And there we see right now, we're taking a look at Gandhi down on our main stage as Legends just took a game over Gotta Love the Sun right there. And we're going to come back right now. Now, one of the most rememberable things from Toronto and heading back to Toronto is that straight whipping rip one, yes. But the big story was Instinct taking on final boss and Walshie's comment talking about taking candy from a baby. I'll tell you, we already talked about it a little bit. I was at home. I wasn't feeling well. I was on my couch. I had a drink in my hand. I jumped up and I spilled it everywhere. I lost it. It was one of those moments where you see somebody who's fighting for so much more than just what the, their place in that tournament. And you said, usually we're talking about who won the tournament, who the champion was. The number one story out of Toronto was that Walshie got kicked off a of final boss. Right, took all the fans with him apparently because they were cheering for him the whole weekend. Yes, they were. Beat Final Boss and then rubbed it in their faces. So the question to me was, was is Final Boss going to respond to that? You know what? Based on the way that Walshie played, I'm sure he just wants them to try to. You know, that was at the end of the game, Walshie throwing out a little bit of trash talk, but you really had to see him doing it in the game. He was smacking bodies. He was absolutely dominating the Ogres and BR battles, and that's what I thought was the craziest part. Final Boss, they came out incredibly strong with Neighbor. They were up 2-0 to zero over Straight Rippin, but it seemed that they fell apart mentally. They let Straight Rippin climb back in that series 3-2, to two. And not only that, after losing to Straight Rippin, it seemed that Neighbor's game was completely off. He let it get to him mentally, and they, they allowed Classic to take him all the way to 11 games. They almost didn't even make it to the loser bracket finals. So here in Dallas, Texas, I think we need to look out for Final Boss. Can they stay sharp mentally? And who is going to step up as a leader now that walshie has gone? Obviously, Ogre 1, their team captain, didn't do a good job of that in Toronto. If you ask me, it should be Ogre 2 because he is the one doing it with his gameplay. Well, you know, one of the things you touched on a little bit is Neighbor is, there's no doubt, he's an incredible player. I love to watch him. But one of the knocks Indeed. on him from other pros on the circuit is get into his head. And early on, and if you do that, you have a good chance to get him off of his game. Now, with a team where you're struggling for leadership, what that means is there's nobody to rein him back in. We've seen the issues before. Strong side is a great player, but he's not the leader. Ogre 1, new for him. Maybe not the guy to go to. Like you said, I like Tom. I like Ogre 2 as the guy to step it up with his gameplay and with his mouth. And, and Ogre 2 also said that one of the reasons that, one of the things that got to them, it was some of their mental uh, capacity and their mental game. They, they couldn't maintain their composure. They, that's why they went to 11 games with Classic, lost 2-0 after being up 2-0 to straight ripping. But, I mean, what would be a 2008 Pro Circuit Major League Gaming event without the jersey coming off and changing bodies? I mean, we talk about team changing.